if you want some quick, simple, easy tools that you can use to help kids stay more focused and regulated while they're doing online school, while they're doing homework, while they're in the classroom, then this video is for you. I'm gonna show you some of my favorite tips and tricks. So the first is some crazy straws. Now, I've got a couple of examples here from my clinic, but basically what you wanna do is get a straw that's pretty long that kids have to um, suck through either water, you can do a smoothie, you can do you know a fruit water, whatever you're going to do, but the sucking motion um, is regulating, it's calming to the brain, it helps with focus. And so having a water bottle there by where they're doing their schoolwork at home or even in the classroom, sticking one of these crazy straws in it and they have to suck through that, that is a great regulating, calming, focusing tool. Simple, quick, easy, you can get these at the dollar store, you can get them online, you can get them anywhere. If you want an added uh, bonus, you can have them suck a thicker liquid, like a smoothie, a shake, maybe even some applesauce or something like that. That gets even um, extra sort of work that they have to do with their mouth and is extra calming and regulating. Also, chewing gum, sucking on a hard candy, that chewing, that sucking kind of motion, again, another way to get that regulating, calming, organizing, focusing input to the brain. Not a fan of doing things with a lot of sugar in them, but there are some great natural gums that you can get, even some candies and things like that, so that's another option. Now, this next idea is um, some TheraPutty or Play-Doh, or this is uh, called Pinch Me. I like this um, because it's uh, soft and pliable. It also has a really nice smell um, to it. So all kinds of options like this, but this is great for kids to be able to manipulate while they're working, while they're listening to their lesson, um, maybe even while they're working on something, they can be manipulating it in their other hand, can put it on the table in front of them and knead it. And again, that pressure, that work that they're um, doing with their muscles, helpful for organizing, calming, regulating, focusing in the brain. So that's another great um, tip and you can use anything pliable like that. Um, hand fidgets also work. I didn't bring any examples of that, but things like a stress ball that they can squeeze, a koosh ball, um, even something like a rubber band that they can stretch in their hands, a paper clip to fiddle with. There's all kinds of fidget toys that you can buy now too. Something that isn't distracting, but that is a simple repetitive motion that just gives their hands something to do that can be very regulating and um, focusing for some kids. So that's another tip. Now, things for the chair. For kids who like to be constantly moving, they're bouncing, they're kicking their legs, maybe getting up and moving around a lot, I really like to use um, some TheraBand. They make these uh, all kinds of places now, exercise uh, bands. You don't have to order them from therapy catalogs or anything, you can get them lots of places. Um, but this is some TheraBand, it's stretchy, and what you can do is tie this around the front legs of the chair that the child is sitting in and it gives them this nice stretchy band then to bounce their feet against while they're sitting there. It keeps them contained, it gives them some resistance to bounce against, it's quiet so it's not going to bother anybody and it helps them to be able to get that movement that their brain is craving and needing so that they can focus and get their work done um, even better. So that's an idea. You can also, I've seen people use um, bungee cords. You can use anything that you can tie around the front legs of that chair that they can kind of um, bounce against. Then I've got this weighted lap pad. And again, this is something that I have um, from the clinic, but I've had lots of families even make these at home. This is just filled with um, corn. And this is about five pounds, but you can make them even lighter for uh, younger kids, you can buy them now in lots of places. Anything that just provides some weight, some deep pressure on the lap, that can be calming, regulating, organizing, help with focus and attention, and just emotional regulation for some kids. You don't want to leave it on there for a long time because the body adjusts to it. So, you know, let kids kind of pick and choose when they think it would be helpful. They can have it on their lap and then remove it, um, you know, after 15, 20 minutes probably at the most. So that's the weighted um, lap pad. Then there's things that kids can sit on. This is a sit disc. You can buy these commercially. Um, there's all kinds of options now. This is what one of them looks like. Here's another one that is sort of angled. 
that you put uh, the child sits on, on the chair. And these provide sort of the surface then that they can move around in the chair on it. Again, it's not distracting to anyone. It doesn't create noise, but it gives them sort of this tactile input and also allows them to move in ways that are organizing and regulating and helpful to them while they're sitting in the chair. So a couple of options for that. Another cheap way you can do it is to get, um, you know, a sort of a medium sized beach ball at the dollar store, inflate it just a little bit with air so that when the child sits on it, it's about this high. And that just, again, gives sort of a movable, more fluid surface for them to sit on on the chair. You can do that for like a dollar, super cheap and easy. You can also think about using something like an exercise ball as a chair for them to sit on. This works for some kids. Um, other kids do better to have um, one of these ball chairs that has a stand that it fits in if they tend to kind of move all over in it or if their balance isn't great. You can get ball chair stands now that that um, you know, can be helpful, but that allows them to bounce. It gives them that regulating input that actually helps them to focus, attend, um, to stay more emotionally regulated. So that's another option. I'm also a big fan of letting kids choose uh, where they want to work. Some kids are gonna do best standing at the counter. Some may be lying on the floor on their belly, propped up on their elbows. That provides some good deep pressure input to their upper body um, that can be calming and regulating and help support their attention. Also, when they're on their tummy, they're in one spot then on the floor. Um, letting kids sit in a rocking chair, a beanbag chair. Uh, even back when I was a teacher, before I became a psychologist, I was never um, you know, super invested in where kids got things done as long as they were in a space that wasn't bothering other people and was conducive to their brain being able to focus and do what they needed to do. So give kids options, try things out, see what's going to work for them. I also like the idea of a pace space. And what I'll do here for kids who like to move around a lot, or maybe they get up and they walk around the classroom or they're walking around at home who need that sort of um, repetitive walking kind of movement, that is helpful for them for being able to process and focus and, and attend to things. Create a pace space on the floor. Just use some masking tape or duct tape, mark off a space. If they're learning in front of the computer right now, you can just mark the space off so that they stay, you know, in front of the screen. If that's what they need to do in the classroom, I tend to create these either on the sides of the classroom or in the back of the room. So it's not distracting to kids um, who may not do well with having other kids moving around them. But you basically mark off a space, a box, a rectangle on the floor and that gives some boundaries then some visual boundaries for them to stay in and that's their pace space they can move around in that space they can walk back and forth maybe they have a fidget in their hands while they're doing it um, so that can be really helpful too remember the key is to figure out what's going to work for your specific child and to get out of the mind of an adult um, which we think, you know, sit still, focus. No, we need to get in the minds of kids and realize that movement is really important and actually enhances and helps brain development and the learning process. And especially for kids with sensory processing issues, with neurodevelopmental issues like ADHD, autism spectrum disorder, you know, learning disabilities, those kinds of things, they often really benefit from being able to have structured uh, movement, being able to have some deep pressure input um, in order to focus. So we don't want to say sit still and listen and focus and do your work. That usually is really counterproductive. What we want to do is find a way for them to meet their need for movement um, in a way that doesn't disrupt others, but that helps support their brain's ability to learn, to focus, to process, to do all of those things. So I hope this gave you some helpful ideas. I would love to hear what you have found works well for you. Share in the comments if you plan on trying one of these things um, you know, that I showed you today, or share the things that you have found are really helpful for your child or kids that you work with um, so that we can all benefit from that and generate more ideas. I look forward to hearing what works for you. Share with me in the comments and we'll have a discussion there.